In this week's special Take Note edition of Common Grounds, we hear from family and friends of an Olathe South High School alum, Ryan Hill, who died by suicide shortly after graduation in 2013. We discuss the impact of his death, mental health in schools, and we discuss the Netflix suicide drama called 13 Reasons Why. Our host location, Community in Overland Park. Anytime people talk about Ryan, I've noticed that they laugh and they, they smile. Well, yeah, Ryan was hilarious, funny, always joking around, always had a smile on his face, and that's why the suicide was just such a complete shock to everybody. And he wrote a letter, and one of the first things he said was, you know, I'm not sad and depressed, that's not why I'm doing this, and for whatever weird reason in his head, he just felt like this was his next step. This is just what he needed to do. So yeah, it was, it was horrible. It was, you know, obviously just the worst time ever. It was a really long funeral, because <laughs> then we also had, you know, the photo montage thing, and, but, um, but I think it was a, good send-off for him and mm -hmm. and uh, and it just meant a lot to me that just everybody that came and and it showed the impact that he had on everybody and which of course just makes me more angry that he took that away from everybody that you know to be able to be with him you know for many more years and I don't know it's just horrible I just wish nobody ever had to go through it so Rem and, and Frankie, you, you both went to high school with Ryan, right? Mm -hmm. Was mental health even on the radar? I don't know. We always kind of thought, you know, he had maybe had a screw loose or two, but <laughs> no one was gonna, you know, say that he had, was like suffering from any kind of like severe mental health issue. So, I mean, yeah. Um, off that is, you know, we were with him the the day before, and he, we were having the best time ever. Just another. Another great summer day um, with all the boys together, and it was a, everything was everything was normal. We couldn't. There was no difference, no no change in his personality or his, you know, his you know sense of humor, nothing like that. It was everything seemed normal. So, thirteen reasons why you can't avoid it. People are talking about it. Seems like everywhere, um, and part of it being a Netflix series is. It's a drama, mm -hmm. and, and you know uh, you can argue that it romanticizes it to to some degree just by that nature. Uh, what's what's the the separation between what you know and have experienced and what the the show portrays? I have Netflix, obviously I can watch it, but it's not something that um, you know that I I can actually watch mentally. Um, I think there's. I think there's good things. I, I can see good and bad coming out of it. Um, you know, the one good thing I think that is coming out of it is um, I think it's actually uh, bringing it to a forefront. In that, you know, I think I think for so long that suicide was just kind of a taboo, and that um, you know just gets pushed under the rug, or if it happens, you try to keep it quiet or whatever. You know, at least the uh, at least the show is actually um, talking about it. It's making people talk about it now. Whether or not that's for good or bad, I think that's all kind of. I think uh, it's all kind of how you um, how you take it. It goes back to that stigma for you know mental health treatment. No, no one's gonna go. Hey, I need mental health treatment. Right. I mean, just walking in the door or making a phone call is really difficult. And so, the more we can make that be like not not a big deal, just like going to the doctor or the dentist or something else, the, the better, I think, and the less stigma we have, but we've got a long ways to go mm -hmm. on that, but we can all join in that, reducing that stigma. Yeah. One of the things that, I mean, obviously I'm like Dustin, I haven't watched the show and don't think I could, but just from things that I've read and heard about it, the one negative, I guess, um, is that they seem to make it appear that suicide was a solution mm -hmm. and I think that's one thing that 
and maybe the show did, like I said, I didn't see it, but they really need to stress that suicide is not an option mm -hmm. and that there's got to be a bunch of other stuff that you could do first and that is just not one of them. Thirteen Reasons Why, if I'm listening to all of you correctly, the title itself is almost a misnomer. I mean, you don't, you don't get those, uh, the reasons, do you? Uh, and maybe that is, is part of the, the point, uh, that it's, it's not an option and there's not a solid, justified, justifiable reason for it. Right, I think any of those reasons that she portrays, um, they're all things that, that can be overcome. They're, mm -hmm. they're solvable problems. And not that they're easy, necessarily, to, I mean, we all have problems, and sometimes they're, you guys know, we've experienced it, they're really, really hard, um, but the, the solution is not to mm -hmm. um, I kind of think it also could just be 13 reasons why not, you know, um, because there's, there's never a reason that suicide is the ultimate answer to a question. You know, I think that if you if, if you go into it into into watching the show, and like I said, I've not seen it and probably won't. Um, if you go into it thinking 13 reasons why it is the answer, you're, you might look at it completely different as if you actually go into it looking at 13 re reasons why this is not the answer. Which I think that's something that you know, as a as a um, as a teenager or someone who might be watching it who is influenced by this type of stuff that that's why you know, the communication of you know, a parent or of a school saying you know think about it this way if you want to watch it watch it but think about it this way rather than the other